Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin from grayflorals.com and welcome back for another episode of After the Glue Dries. As I'm sure many of you were last episode, I just want to reassure you that this is definitely a personalized process so everything I mention may or may not work for you and I know several of you are probably already past the point of having your layout sorted or things like that. So I hope you stay tuned throughout the process when we get into the actual journaling elements and the dating elements and tips and tricks for those. But we're still in the nitty gritty of the beginning. And last week we went over how to sort out your layouts to start you on the road to success to be able to tackle them properly. So if you haven't checked that out, I'll have the playlist linked down below so you can watch all of the episodes in order, but make sure you have some sticky notes and a pen lying around because you'll definitely want to take some notes for your own ideas. So to recap, last week we were supposed to sort out our layouts into categories that we felt would you know, kind of group them together in a way that would be able to be tackleable together. So the way that I had them broken out was by high maintenance and low maintenance as my two main categories. Then I had album and subject specific categories because I have specific albums that have repetitive photos. So like my DC album and my Disney albums had specific piles for themselves. I also decided midway through my process that I needed that for a couple more specific scenarios. So if you're looking for more behind the scenes on how all of that went down and how I sat on my living room floor and made a giant mess of all of the layouts that I had sorted, you can check out the behind the scenes vlogs over on my Patreon, which I'll have linked down below in case you guys are interested in joining. Then the final group we had was to be filed, and I actually have that pile right underneath this top one, but I wanted to share something that I discovered along the way. Now there is definitely no right or wrong way to do this, different piles for different people as they say. So if you find that you have things that don't fit those categories or those categories don't work for you as we defined them in that video, like this one, I found a layout that's literally missing a photo. Um, and I think I do have the photo somewhere already printed. I was just waiting for it to come in the mail. It still needs journaling, but I mean, it needs a photo. This is the only one that I have that is missing a photo, but I thought it would be an extraneous circumstance to keep out so that I could one, find the photo because I think I've put it in a special place so I wouldn't forget where it is. And therefore it's probably sat there too long and I've now forgotten where it is. And if you guys remember, this is a really old layout. I did a collab maybe last year or the year before that um, about this. Let's see, these were, I wonder what date these were for. They expired in March 2019. Oh, there it is. 9818. So I either did this in the fall of 2018 or beginning 2019. So an old layout, an oldie but a goodie, and I would like to essentially finish it. Um, so this one needs a photo, it needs the journaling finished, but it's just one of those extraneous circumstances you might find in your pile of layouts. And several of you have shared great ideas for how you organize your layouts to be put away. And I really, really appreciate you guys sharing. Definitely check out the comments if you haven't already on the other videos so you guys can get more ideas for yourselves. But I did have quite a bit of the to be filed pile. I thought I'd have more, but I would say I only have, um, I don't know, this is two and a half inches maybe of layouts. But I also did something with those other layouts that I said needed special piles. So what I did, I just put them back in my iris container, but they have little dividers via sticky notes. So there's a bunch of sticky notes sticking out because a lot of these are same day stories. So we went to Canada for a day and I have tons of photos and layouts already done for that. We went to um, a zoo that has a ton of different photos and layouts already done for that. Again, Disney and DC. And when you have those types of albums where you do repetitive things during the same day, you might have similar journaling for them. So we'll do a whole nother episode about that. But what are the next steps for us to go through this? So once you have your piles, whether they're redo piles, purge piles, you know, maybe you're just getting rid of some layouts that you really don't like. You really don't like how they turned out. Maybe they're duplicates. Whatever your piles are, I'm sure you have some that are completely done and ready to be put away. This is where I'm starting. I think it's a great way to figure out where we're going to be evaluating how we're going to be putting them into our scrapbooks, which again is a very personal decision. I know some people who put them in chronologically. I am not one of those people. I do so many different types of layouts for 
my scrapbooks that I don't, sometimes I might not even scrapbook something from a month because that month wasn't super exciting. The everyday photos of the dog or the cat or me, I just don't have a story behind them. So you'll get layouts like this one, just a random day at the park that I really loved. But maybe this is the only photo I scrapbooked from August. I don't know. I know that's not the case, but for an example. But do I even have a 2018 album? Guys, I really, I really don't know if I do. I know I have 2017. I'm just not sure if I ever got a 2018 album. So like, these are the questions we'll be answering. And some of these I'll actually need to keep out because for example, this is from, these both these layouts right here are from Canada Day where I went to Canada and did a bunch of things. So I know that all of these dates are correct for those other layouts. So I wanna make sure that I'm not repeating stories throughout those pages. So this is when we went to the fort, and I know I have more fort pictures, so I wanna make sure that I'm not repeating those. Then we have the adoption photos. So this was the main adoption page I made for our cats. So I need to figure out what I'm gonna do with the rest of their adoption photos, which I still have a ton of in my stash to scrapbook. This one also has a partner page. So this one's done with journaling and a date, but the matching page is not. Isn't that odd? I actually made these at two different times. That's why they weren't together for the longest time, but need to fill this out so they can go in the same thing. So while these are in the to be filed pile, a lot of these need work, whether it be adhesive because we have a ton of loose corners or whether it be like, why do I have another tab here that I need to fill out when I already put the date in the journaling? Um, this one needs some glue as well, but 2017, this one, I think, yeah, 2016, this one's got another tab. You know, they're never done in my eyes. I guess I could always add more, right? So I'm going to go through all of these layouts and before they get filed away, we're going to do a couple checks. Check for extra adhesive. Do they need extra adhesive? You know, do a test on some of the corners, um, some of the pieces that might be on foam adhesive. Do a double check on those to make sure they're all stable and all good. Then we're gonna check to see if there's pencil lines. Now I left the pencil lines on this <laughs> that's why I'm picking on this layout in particular and I don't know why um, I definitely should have erased them before I used to do pen circles all the time on my layouts um, when I was in college that was just one of the things I really like to do I think if you guys have animals you might also want to do a cat hair check or a dog hair check or a furry friend check because I have cat hair all over some of these layouts and it's quite sad and then you're gonna do a date check and a journaling check just to make sure that they're in their spots. Now, sometimes you might come across a layout that's done, but I feel like I could add more to this layout. Now, I'm not sure if this was a challenge layout or it was something specific, but I feel like I could add some sequins onto this to make it feel more complete or enamel dots or something. I just feel like it's not complete. So I could go back and add more things. Don't be afraid to do that. I also noticed I used four types of washi tape on this layout, which I love when I do that. I'm so glad. Um, and then you'll find ones that don't fit into your normal every day. So when we do go back to put these in albums, and that'll be another section that I'll eventually show you examples of, is if you have, if you're a multi-type scrapbooker like I am, you'll have pages that are 8.5 by 11, you'll have pocket pages, you'll have random bits and pieces that you need to somehow piece together once you put them all into the album, which is another reason I don't put them in chronologically because I do this all the time and it's never planned out. I just make it an eight and a half by 11 and say, oh, I'm so glad I made a smaller size. And then I go to put in the album and I don't have any other eight and a half by 11s to pair with it. So then you have an empty backside, um, which of course you can always just pair with either a piece of patterned paper or plain cardstock. You don't necessarily have to always have each page protector filled with a layout, but I tend to like that. So make sure you're checking for glue, for dates, for journaling. Reading through the journaling is very important, only because you wanna make sure that you told the story fully, because if you have more room for journaling, maybe you wanna go back and add more. And another thing you can do, if you haven't journaled yet, you can put on here when you journaled. I know Amy signs all of her layouts, and I really like that idea, so I've started putting the date on when I've made the layout versus when the photo was taken, which is on the front. So we wanna make sure the glue is down, we wanna make sure the journaling spelled correctly, we wanna make sure all those little bits and pieces are good, and of course you can also always add more. So if you feel like you have enough stash, you just wanna use more of it up, and you come across a layout that you don't particularly love, or that you think could use more like this one, could definitely use some sequins if I really wanted. I'm not saying I'm going to do that for some of mine, but just an idea, because why not? I mean, really, why not? We have a ton of supplies, typically, 
and we can always use a little bit more on our pages. There's this one. Again, this was all the completed, ready to be filed layouts. And I use that with quotes, air quotes, because again, we still have to do glue checks. Um, if you have things like vellum, maybe you're concerned that they're not glued down enough. You might have other concerns, you know, just kind of taking things in stride and doing some checks. Um, and you don't know maybe how long these layouts have been made. Again, I don't know how old some of these are. I know this one's pretty old because I remember the sketch that we did for it. And I simply just don't remember um, when I did it. But journaling's done, dates on, but am I confident in it? Do I like it? Asking yourself those questions. This one's supposed to have journaling here, but I actually put it here instead. The sketch definitely had it here, but I didn't do that because I thought it'd be awkward to have to write between two elevated items. But do I want to add more? Do I want to add less? I could do splatters, you know. Reevaluating your style now with a layout from previous years is totally okay. And I want you guys to really just love your layouts for the way you are. And don't be afraid to just leave them as is, because again, this speaks to your style then, not necessarily your style now. And you might have to do some extra trimming. Like here, you can see that there's actually uh, stuff left over from the branding strip because I did a poor job cutting it. Beautiful Wild Whisper paper though. But then we have all these layouts to file. So if you have a larger pile than I do, you might want to actually take them out and start sorting them by year and put them in chronological order. Totally depends on how you organize your albums. For mine, I just put them in the first open page protector that matches their size in that album. And if you don't have an album, now is a great time to figure out a storage solution for when you get an album. I know several people use these iris containers. Here's a look at the lid so you can see that sticker. Um, several people use these types of iris containers or the shelf units that hold 12 inch paper to put in each of their albums. So you'd have a 2018 one for all your 2018 pages and file them chronologically in there if that's how you put them in your album. And I know it might seem crazy not to put them in chronological order, but I've never had to go back through an album and actually find something on a specific date. As long as the date is on the layout, I don't see why they can't go in any order. However, if you do have coordinating pages, like I said, all of these, all of these Canada pages, which will go in my 2018 album, because it says 2018, I want all of these together. Now, will they go in the September section? I don't know, but once you start building out a layout or a scrapbook if you have d-ring if you have etc look, look at this why is there no adhesive under these that is crazy to me I don't know why I did that but if you want to put them in chronological order file them first before you put them into the album with d-rings again I know we can easily move around the page protectors but you'll soon find that's a pain if you have to do that numerous times in a row so if you are a chronological scrapbooker, make sure that you put them in order before you try to bring them to your album. And some people are so organized that they also know what photos they still have to scrapbook for a certain album. So if you're comparing a photo library to what you've had printed and scrapbooked, make sure you also leave that room and that spacing in there. And you can also use sticky notes to leave yourself notes in the album itself to say this is the page for, I don't know, your birthday. This is the page that needs to be about um, adopting your cat. This needs to be the page about the trip to the park, etc. Setting yourself up for success means leaving yourself notes behind. I promise it sounds weird, but leaving yourself notes so you know your progress and you know what you've done is super important to make sure you have success later down the road. But that is my update for you guys. I had tons and tons of piles here. I'll show you another box that I had full of layouts. It's very heavy. And I would say it's probably uh, almost a foot deep of high maintenance layouts, as you can read. They need dates, they need journaling, they need glue. Um, and what I found is that despite having a system um, of a lot of different piles. I was, as I was going through layouts, I started to see a trend, whether it be the layouts I made with a specific kit, whether it be these layouts I made in college, which again, yes, I still have layouts that I have not put away that I made over four years ago, but that's not my fault, um, which I explained in some of the comments back. We have moved quite a few times over the last four years, and I've never had all of my albums in one place, the same place that I lived for quite some time. And now that I do, I can actually tackle all of these and put them away. So if you're in a similar situation where you move a lot, your albums are in storage because you just moved, 
I completely get it. And it can be really, really stressful to keep scrapbooking and see these piles grow of layouts and you're not taking care of them or you know you're neglecting them but you're not it's just extraneous circumstances that make it difficult to put them into an album and to be honest I probably have an album or at least I used to when I was in college that I just put all of my completed layouts in there were no dates there were no journaling um, and I haven't gotten to that point of looking through my albums yet but I promise you they are there I have layouts in albums that do not have dates I have layouts and albums that do not have journaling. So the ones that are outside are just the tip of the iceberg. So I hope that makes some of you feel better about your poor decision making or your what I call scrapbook laziness. Um, because what I really like is making the layouts. I think putting them away is quite tedious. But through this series over the next three months, we will tackle it together and we will develop better habits and we will find better processes to, you know, make sure this high maintenance pile is maybe one or two because you don't know the date on the photos. Um, but we're gonna start journaling on every page that we make and we're gonna start putting the date on every page we make because this is stressful. Um, but I'm glad to be tackling it now and tackling it alongside you guys because I know several of you are looking for tips and tricks and if you're new in scrapbooking, this will be a great lesson. Do not let this happen to you. Again, this is a pile that is probably, actually, let's get a ruler. It is one, I've grabbed a ruler that's not helpful. So it's six, seven, eight, no, at least nine inches tall. And this isn't the only pile of high maintenance layouts. So I definitely have a foot's worth of high maintenance layouts that we will tackle in a later week. But this week we're doing to be filed. We're gonna file those away, put them away, get them out of the way so we can focus on things that need a lot more help. So I hope you guys enjoyed this update. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think of the series so far. Again, if you want to know more about the series or the behind the scenes, check out Patreon, which will be linked down below. And don't forget to check out my new Black Lives Matters resources linked down below so you guys can get educated about what is wrong with our society at the moment and how you can take action to fix it. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.